we're going to simplify this expression that has a cube root in it. Notice there's a negative sign underneath the, the cube root, and the cube root of a negative number is going to be negative. Square root of a negative number is, it's not a real number. All right, so let's see. We have to rewrite whatever's in here as perfect cubes times something. And if you want, you could actually take the y to the 15th out now because 3 already goes into 15. So that the cube root of y to the 15th is y to the 5th. So we could actually take that out right away. And if you want, you could even do this since there's a negative sign. That's like your negative 1. You could take the negative 1 out on your first step. So it might look a little bit easier if we do that first. So then we have negative 3 times negative 1. That'll be 3 x, and we have y times y to the fifth, which is y to the sixth, and then what we have left in here is what? I've got just the 40 and the x to the eleventh, and I need to write those as perfect cube times something. So the perfect cubed in 40 is 8. That's 8 times 5, and for our exponents we have to have a multiple of 3. 3 has to go into the exponent, so I could write that as x to the ninth times x squared. All right, so the cube root of 8 is a 2. The cube root of x to the 9th, oops, I forgot to write the 3 in here. Cube root of x to the 9th is x cubed. So that gets multiplied by what else, what's out in front. So that'll give me 3 times 2 is 6 x times x cubed is x to the fourth, y to the sixth, and then don't forget to the right the three inside here for the cube root. What's left is the five x squared. And that's one way to do this problem. You could have wait have waited to take out this negative in the y to the fifteenth at this step. You could have written this as negative eight times five, for instance, and then a negative two would have come out. And you could have just left that y to the 15th and drawn it out at this step.